about Idris here. I've got some rough and Idris side by side. So there are a few things you'll notice immediately. Um, we don't use parentheses to call functions in Idris. You'll have to be comfortable with that. Um, we define t pretty much all the types in Idris are going to look <coughs> sort of like enums in Rust. So we can define a generic type up here. Um, we write it, we say like these are functions that make a value. So this takes basically on the Rust side, this says this is a function that takes a T and another list and makes a list. And um, type declarations look the same. And we can do the same kind of code here. So this is how we can sum that. Um, so we can define some types that we can't define in Rust in Idris. So this is a type which not only has, is generic over some type, it's generic over a number. And here, um, our nil here, our empty list, has zero things in it. And our constructor here that makes a bigger list takes something and a list of n things and makes a list of n plus 1 things. So with this, we can say, like, this is a list of three integers. And if we try to put four integers in there, we'll get a type error down at the bottom here. Um, same if we put two, it's saying zero is not equal to one because it counts down from there. Um, we can use this to help ourselves out here. So uh, over on the right there, if we want to get the last item of a vector in Rust, um, we get an option because maybe we have an empty list. Sometimes we know we have a list with stuff in it, so we unwrap it, but it's not able to check that we're sure there. Here, we can define our list to only take lists that have n plus 1 things in them. So the smallest number they can have is 1. I'll split the possibilities here, and we say that um, our function takes, let me go back a moment. Um, up here, the way we define functions is basically every function starts with a match. So we say the sum of an empty list is 0. The sum of something, a list with at least one thing, is that first thing plus other stuff. So it's like the match block inside our function here. So here, because we know that we have at least one thing in our list, we only have to put one arm in the match block. The other one doesn't exist because there's no empty list with one thing in it. Um, and so if we try here, um, our sample, first. Huh? that would be first, you're right. Uh, let's do the other possibilities. So if we have x and then an empty list, it's x. If we have anything else, it's the last of the rest there. Mm. I might have to convince this that this has at least one thing in it right now. And I'm going to skip over that. Because I didn't, I didn't prepare that part there. Um, because the compiler knows a lot of stuff about our code, it can write a lot of code for us. So if you know zip in Rust to combine two iterators into pairs, um, we can write a similar function here that lets us apply functions over the pairs. But in Rust, you have to know what happens when those two iterators are different lengths. I think it probably just stops sooner. Here, since we have the same n in all these, we, it knows that um, you have to have two lengths of the same two lists of the same length. So when I ask it to split our cases here, it knows that uh, they're the same empty list. And here, it knows that if one list has something in it, they both have to have something in it. So we ask it to try and figure out a definition. And that one actually works there. Let's zip with plus 1 and 2, 3 and, th three and 4. It's a list of 4 and 6. Um, and the last thing I really like is that you can write functions in the types. So here we have 
printf.